Hey, it's John at Apache Village RV Center. I'm standing in front of a 2024 Jayco Greyhawk 30Z. This is a Class C motorhome built on a Ford chassis. This is the top of the line Class C motorhome that Jayco has to offer these days. Uh, you can order them in full body paint or get the standard fiberglass as you can see here. We're gonna do a full walk around of the exterior and interior. As long as it doesn't rain on me here, we'll do a full dive into all of that right now. So stay tuned. rain has passed and we're good to go. So let's start at the front of this coach here. We're going to talk about the Ford chassis first before we dive into some of the other features. So for years now, these have been built on the Ford E450 chassis. The major change we've had here in the last couple years, I think 21 was the year it changed. No longer do we have the uh, 6.8 liter V10 Ford. This has a 7.3 liter V8 which has jumped up a little bit in horsepower. We're up to 425 horsepower and 450 foot-pounds of torque. A um, little bit better fuel economy. You know, I think overall they're quieter. That's the biggest thing to me. The V10 likes to downshift and it's a screamer. Where this puts out a little more horsepower at lower RPM and overall seems to downshift less and provides a little bit quieter ride on the interior. Um, you know, fuel economy overall, it's not anything to brag about when we're dealing with a big, giant, huge displacement V8, but it is a little bit better than in the past. So if you're doing a lot of travel, you know, that's gonna come into play. So the other thing we deal with here, this chassis comes... Sorry, folks, my battery died. So I was right in the middle of talking about lengthening this chassis at the Jayco factory. So they're gonna have to do that. They have to build uh, big steel extensions off the back of this chassis to support the back of the house, so to speak. Um, they're also going to have to lengthen the drive shaft on this chassis. A lot of the other manufacturers are going to cut that drive shaft down, add an extension and just weld it back together and do minimal, make minimal effort to rebalance that drive shaft, to provide a smooth ride. At Jayco, you're going to hear about the J-Ride system, which is right here on the side of the unit, J-Ride. And what that is, is a couple, it's just a term for a couple of different enhancements Jayco does to make sure they're offering you the best ride. One of those is properly computer balancing that uh, rebuilt drive shaft that they're going to have on here. That's going to reduce vibrations from the engine and the differential going back to the rear axle. So this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. That drive shaft extends all the way from the transmission to the back, uh, the back axle here. So. They're gonna do that. They're also gonna add front and rear stabilization. They're gonna add Coney shocks up front with FDS. Now the FDS is basically a Coney system that is going to help reduce, you know, big hits from the suspension, hitting a big pothole, but also at slow speeds offers a nice smooth ride as well. You know, these are trucks. They're coming in here, they're built to be utility trucks. That's what this chassis is. So they're doing these upgrades to provide you with a more luxurious ride instead of feeling like you're driving a big U-Haul truck or something. Um, now, lastly, one of the things, and I can actually show you this here, they're gonna install these Hellwig helper springs. So if you can see that little U-joint right there with the Hellwig helper spring on top, that's gonna help stiffen up the rear suspension so that when you have full water tanks or driving around with a big heavy load, um, it can help handle that, that load on the rear axle a little bit better. Now, last but not least, they're gonna put rubber grommets everywhere between the, uh, not grommets, but big uh, rubber uh, shock absorbers between the chassis and the house itself, which is gonna help just eliminate vibrations once again. They're not just gonna bolt this house straight to the chassis. They're trying to do their best to uh, engineer ways to make sure you're getting the most luxurious ride possible. So now kind of working our way backwards once again, let me show you the front cap here. Oh, and it started raining again. We're gonna deal with it though. So if you look at this molded fiberglass cap, you're gonna notice up top, we have an automotive style windshield and then there are no seams. This is a one piece fiberglass cap. Let me get back under the awning here. <laughs> this fiberglass cap is going to prevent leaks. 
If you look at a bunch of older motorhomes and other manufacturers that are built at a lower price point, this is the nicest Class C motorhome that Jayco builds, as I mentioned earlier. You're gonna notice seams on the front, kind of on the top up there, and then also on the front, sometimes on this lower side right here as well. Those are areas that are extremely susceptible to leaking. So for instance, when we get a trade in, and let's say it's like an earlier 2012 or something like that, one of the first places I'm gonna go to look for leaks in that motorhome to see if there's any water damage is right along there where that seam's at. When you're driving down the road and everything's shifting and moving and creaking, that seam up there can go bad and the, the owner might not even know it and they've been having water seep straight through that seam and start to damage and rot out that front cap and everything behind it. So, you know, having that one piece front cap is gonna eliminate a lot of that. You're only gonna have to maintain your top seam right where that fiberglass roof attaches to the fiberglass front cap with lap sealing. And you really don't have as much maintenance. And look at how the water is just running off here right now. This is perfect, it's raining, it's showing you. There's no way water is getting into this cap unless you accidentally put a giant hole in it or something. It's just harmlessly dripping right off, not even getting to where the seam is at under here. This is perfect that it's raining. So you can see all the way around, all this water is just running right off. We're not having to worry about leaks. You know, you just need to maintain a couple seals here instead of all these seals all over the cap that are constantly flexing. Now, going backwards, you can see we have a nice big awning that's keeping me out of the rain. We're gonna have frameless windows. We have a vent up here for our uh, microwave hood. And we're gonna have storage all along here, outside speaker, our uh, water heater, furnace, propane tank, and then all of these little storage compartments. Not that these are, you know, useless per se, but hey, they're really small, right? You're not packing a ton of stuff into this, and that is one of the biggest things people complain about with a Class C motorhome. You know, I can't store as much stuff as I could in a big Class A, or I wish my Class C had more storage. Well, this floor plan has something special in it. You come back here, under the raised bed, there is a gigantic storage compartment with access from both sides, ABS plastic in the bottom, this nice big tough um, plastic insert here. You can store all kinds of stuff back here. I've seen people put racks and big storage bins with drawers and all kinds of things. You can put a slide out if you wanted to right across this, a slide out tray that would go out there if you find one narrow enough. Um, lots of different solutions for this. So lots of uh, high marks in my personal opinion for storage on this unit. You know, you don't see that in a lot of Class C's. Also, if you inspect a little further, let's see, not this one, should have outlets, yep, right here. So you have a TV connection and a 110 outlet there to plug in a TV. You're also gonna have nice convenient access to your low point drain in this other storage compartment. So let me get these all closed up since it's raining. And if you noticed on the rear back here, we have a rear slide out on this floor plan. Now I'll get back to this when we get inside to kind of explain things, but the reason we're able to have all this storage is because the bed is inside this rear slide out. This is advantageous for a couple different reasons. One, um, you can go into a rest area. Sometimes rest areas are really packed and you don't have enough room if you have a side slide out to bump that slide out out to get the bed out, which is fine. You can crawl into the bed, you know, but it's nice to be able to use that extra space, isn't it? If you're in a spot where you're too tight or you're in your storage facility or whatever and you wanna pull this out, it just comes right out the back. There's nothing back here. You don't have to worry about that. There's not somebody parked right next to you at the rest area along the highway that uh, your slide out's taking up too much space and going over the lane marker uh, or the parking spot lines. Um, so it's really nice to have that rear slide out back there. All right, I have the lens all cleaned off. Hopefully that footage wasn't ruined from the rain. But if you look back here, we have a 7,500 pound Kurt hitch with a seven pin adapter and a four pin under that if you wanted to use that as well for a flatbed trailer. Um, perfect for, you know, flat towing a vehicle or whatever you might wanna do. There's a 750 pound tongue weight limit on this. Uh, but once again, going back to that big old 7.3 liter V8, we're able to tow a nice sized vehicle with us if we need to. Now, depending on your level of comfort, you know, I can pretty much drive this Class C just about anywhere I want and not worry a ton. Um, but on longer trips, the reason that people like to bring um, a tow vehicle with them is you're not constantly breaking down your base camp, so to speak, and then repacking it up and then bringing it all out, setting it up again, breaking it down, putting it away. 
you know, you can leave this at the campground, take your other vehicle and go explore. You know, if you're camping outside of a national park, for instance, that's something you're probably going to want to do. Um, and if not, hey, I typically would never bring a tow vehicle with me, to be honest. I have gone places and rented a car before. That was really easy for me to do, so I went ahead and did that. Um, you can also just drive this wherever you want, but once again, that's kind of one of the things to keep in mind is you might be breaking down your camp and packing it up all the time. So now walking around the other side of the camper here, we're gonna have our outside shower, black tank flush, city water connection, our uh, fuel cap right here to fill up. We're also gonna have our sewage outlet right here with our black and gray valves, some additional storage compartments, our 30 amp service, now, let me touch on that really quick. Additional outside drain to or a low point drain. This unit does have 30 amp service with two air conditioners because there is a power management system on board. So we can plug in with the nice, easy to handle 30 amp cord and still run two ACs with the appliances inside because of that power management system. And what that does is it's gonna shed power and redirect energy around. It has kind of a pecking order of what's most important. If you flip both ACs on, something lower in that order, it's gonna say, all right, well, I'm gonna shut this circuit off so I don't uh, overload and uh, have one of the ACs kick off my circuit breaker. So really nice to be able to just have 30 amp service and not uh, 50 amp, kind of opens up some doors for you. Not all campsites have all 30 and 50 amp spots. A lot of them do, but if you run into the thing where they say, hey, we only have a 30 amp spot left, there you go. Now, going back to the sleeping overnight in a rest area or something like that, of course, we're gonna have a generator. We have a <laughs> Camera cut me off again. I think the rain's messing with my uh, mics here. But talking about this generator, 4,000 watt Onan generator, it runs off your fuel tank. It is not propane fed, so you have a massive fuel tank to run it off of. It will also never run you below a quarter of your fuel tank left. So if you're ever out and your generator's shutting off and then it won't restart and you're like, what's going on? Check your fuel gauge. There's a very good chance you're probably at a quarter of a tank and that's why it won't turn back on for you. Um, reason being, obviously, I don't want you to wake up in the morning and you're totally out of fuel. So their hope is that a quarter of a tank will be plenty of gas to get you to the next fuel station and be able to go from there. Um, one other thing I want to mention, side marker cameras on both sides and a camera on the rear that's located on the slide out. So you do have backup cameras as well. Those cameras are attached to this screen right here. So if the engine were running and I hit my left blinker, it's gonna activate that camera and show me what's, on my, what's in my blind spot on the left side. If I hit the right blinker, it'll do so on the right. When I put it in reverse, it's gonna go ahead and show me what's behind me. I like to run this full time too though. I just like to turn it on. Engine's not running, so it's not gonna work right now. But if I had the engine on, I kind of use it as my rear view mirror. I still like having a rear view mirror in here just so I can see what's going on with my guests. I have little kids, so it's nice to be able to see what they're up to back there. Obviously though, this isn't much help if you're wondering what's going on behind you because that's all you're gonna see. So I always have this running. I set it so that the backup camera is running while I'm driving down the road. I can kind of see traffic and especially if I'm towing a vehicle or a trailer, I wanna know what's going on back there. I will skip the propane tank, so I figure I should mention this. Class C motorhomes are different. You are not able to remove this um, propane tank here. You need to go refill it at, you know, an RV place. Uh, a lot of gas stations can do it for you, um, you know, a truck stop. Uh, but this is a 56 pound propane tank. Holds 56 pounds of liquid propane. And it is a 13 gallon tank, if that's the way you like to think. Most places are gonna talk to you about pounds of LP. But the big thing is that is not removable, so you do have to go fill it. Um, at a place that's licensed to do so. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of this coach. So before I even get in the door, we have our standard kind of screen door here that it detaches from the uh, entry door, just like everybody else. There's a deadbolt and a standard lock. We have a nice shade that covers up, gives you a little bit of privacy, just like so. And then if you're wondering where the coach batteries are, you pop this latch, that opens up, your batteries are right under there. We're also gonna have an automatic step that goes in and out, which can be turned off too. So if you wanna turn that off, there is a switch right here, power switch to turn that on and off. Inside and outside speaker switch. Here's your main battery disconnect. Leveling system right here. And a little outlet, get this door closed. 
And right when you walk in, you're going to notice something very familiar if you have seen a Jayco, uh, one of their higher level travel trailers or one of their fifth wheels. This is the BM Pro system. There is an app that hooks up to this that mirrors this screen exactly. So you can operate almost everything on here, actually everything, um, if you're in the vicinity of the camper and it's not moving. Everything on here should be on your phone too. So the home screen, you can operate both air conditioners and the furnace. Let's see, we can check our tank levels, turn on the electric water heater, gas water heater, heated tank pads, water pump, operate our slide outs, awnings, all the lights, which are on dimmers, you can dim those. Oops, and we're disconnected, we gotta reset it. Tire pressure monitoring system, generator, auto generator settings, and then your bathroom fantastic fan. So that's really nice. They also have these manual buttons where you can just kind of turn lights on and off. This is my exterior lights. I can do awning one, slide out one, slide out two, pair with my phone. Very similar if you're familiar with how our fifth wheels and travel trailers work in the Eagle lineup. So right up front, let's start at the front cap. I mentioned this outside, we do not have any seams. This is set up to hold 750 pounds, I believe is the weight limit on this. Let me check my sticker. Yep, 750 pounds. This flips forward. We leave it open at the dealership so people can pop down easily and uh, be able to sit down and test out the driver's seat. But when you're gonna use this as a bunk, you wanna flip that towards me to make a bigger sleeping area. We also have that nice automotive front windshield I mentioned earlier. We have a light switch. And then this is really cool. You push a button over here and that will retract for you. Now, if you have younger kids like I do, there is a ladder that attaches on the front of the bunk and there, are a, there is a screen that buckles there and clips down here so the kids don't roll off. This would be a big fall. You definitely don't wanna roll off and fall down here. Um, that would be painful. Now, looking up here, we have some updated controls on this newer Ford chassis. So we're gonna have all of our menus that we control right here on the steering wheel that appear on this little screen right up here. If you're familiar with the Ford or had a Ford truck or anything like that in the past, this should all look pretty familiar to you. We're gonna have uh, powered mirrors, heated mirrors. Like I mentioned earlier, this nice heads up display with satellite radio or you can Bluetooth, standard radio, you can hook your phone up to it. I want everything to be safe and hands-free for you. Now, standard controls for all of your uh, air conditioning and heating traction control, and then a ton of cup holders and all kinds of places to store things all over the place here, which is really nice. Passenger as well will have a nice big glove box to access here and some storage on the doors. Now, kind of looking back here, we do have the slide out out. You can see that big old slide out. What I love about this floor plan is this right here. So we have two electric recliners you just push the button and it comes out right across in this nice big TV and an electric fireplace that's a 5000 BTU electric heater. How nice is that? And then storage above as well for DVDs and movies or whatever else you want to put up there. And I believe, let's see, nope, no storage behind the TV, but a little bit of extra storage here too. And uh, you have your plugs right here if you do want to plug in any kind of appliances. Now this is a 12 volt refrigerator. In the past, we have had gas electrics in these for the most part. I love the 12 volt, especially because we have a generator. They run off the batteries really well. Um, these come with solar panels as well to help recharge the batteries and tend your batteries as you're out on the road. Best thing about these, they cool off much quicker than the gas electric versions. We don't have the big metal fins up here and it's way deeper. Our gas verges would come to about right here. So we have a lot more space. This one is a 10 cubic foot. So much more space than what we're used to in the past, and they cool off much more quickly. Big bonus there. Now, if you notice right here, we're gonna have a big microwave. Outside, I talked about the vented hood right here. So you can be cooking and ventilate that to the outside. We have a three burner Furion gas stove with a nice backsplash right here. And a little RV oven. Everybody's familiar with this setup. Pretty much. Every RV out there that's been built in the last three years has something similar to this little Furion stove. Now, we have a cutting board and a little drying rack. If you've ever seen one of these, they're kind of cool. They roll up to get out of your way. And then a two-sided sink here. Some people prefer 
the one big sink if you've watched my other videos you know i do but we have the single sink right here with a bunch of drawers or sorry double sink a bunch of full extension drawers to store whatever we need to all of our utensils and such now sleeping wise obviously we have the bunk up top this dinette drops down very easily to make a bed too there's a little lever back here actually this one's different this pops straight up and releases from the wall and swings down hard to do one-handed but once you swing that down you push the comp or the cushions together and that makes a bed and these lay pretty darn flat too you know for kids and stuff and people that don't mind sleeping in a recliner some people have to sleep in a recliner if you have back problems and stuff this lays really nice and flat all the way extended we also have some storage right here too Go ahead and roll that up now all of the windows on this unit are frameless frameless windows are great for days like today if it's raining i can pop these open they're a little sticky brand new pop these open and not worry about rain getting in but the one downside of the frameless windows is that you don't have a ton of ventilation like you would with sliders sliders are going to let a lot more air in but if we come into the bathroom here this is a spot where you could install a fantastic fan and that's kind of what i would recommend honestly i know it has a nice fan in it already but if you get a big max air fan and uh, you have frameless windows you can create a lot of good ventilation to just use you know nature to cool off this vehicle if you're out in the fall or early spring when weather's nice or you're out somewhere where weather's nice all the time and you don't want to use your air conditioner so that is the one fault of these they don't have as good a ventilation but they're going to save your seals they protect your window seals they're literally covered by the window so they're not going to you know degrade as quickly so that's great uh, and then also the fact that water is not going to get in too so right above here we're going to have some nice lighting and a bunch of storage overhead storage here above the recliners And then you're going to notice too these little bluetooth controllers i didn't point this out earlier but you can be sitting right on the dinette and click one of these turn the lights on and off in the coach there you go um, you can also do that from the app on your phone but it's nice having these extra options everywhere to do um, to do some of that too let me show you this storage i'm moving into the bathroom lots of storage here as well under the sink too big medicine cabinet i'd actually probably put an additional shelf in there maybe With your sink right here and then kind of making your way into our bedroom there's your ladder for the bunk that i was talking about and you can also hang some clothes right here as well now one of the neat things about this coach that i kind of like you know a lot of the older floor plans you would have the door that opens and closes here and then the bathroom's all open so the only way you can get privacy is to have this door closed you know you'd have to have this closed but in here somebody can be taking a shower and you won't be violating their privacy if they're in here because of this nice door that they have and you can still get to the bedroom so having this set up the way it is with the nice shower and the toilet in here the skylight Somebody can have total privacy while people can still access everything in the bedroom or be getting ready back here. You know, essentially somebody can be getting ready while the other person is taking a shower, which isn't always the case in every floor plan. So I mentioned earlier too, I would talk about the storage space. If you do notice that rear storage is made possible because the bed is on the riser here. And then we have the slide out kind of elevated too. So when this all slides out, you know, it's pushing out the back, but we're not uh, we're able to still have that big storage compartment because all of this is lifted up and back here more storage on each side of the bed then you're going to have these little wireless chargers that are really nice you can throw your phone on there it'll start charging there you go i think these pop up too yeah so there's little usb chargers on here too if you need those outlets on either side as well this is a queen size bed there are models with the king size bed uh, the 27u is going to have a slide out that goes out this wall we don't have one in stock but when we do soon i will make sure i make a video of that that's the only model in the greyhawk lineup that offers a king size bed this queen though is really nice when the slide outs in it's going to butt right up to this wall you can still get to it while you're driving so let me kind of show you what all this looks like when it's closed down when you're traveling down the road 
Okay, so now I have the slide out in. This is how you would be configured driving down the road. You can see there's a lot of space to walk through here still. The only tight spots like right here. Just kind of turn sideways and walk through there. Now in the bedroom, as I mentioned, this bed kind of touches right against the wall, which kind of makes that off limits over there, but you can crawl right in here and take a nap if you need to, no big deal. Anybody can crawl back here while you're driving. And then you still have access to everything. I mean, you could have this TV on if you rigged up a uh, Wi-Fi system on here and be watching Netflix as long as you have a cell signal while you're going down the road. There's an inverter on board, um, 1000 watt inverter. You can hook up a um, SIM card and you know our WineGuard system that's on board would give you internet. So you're able to work while you're on the road, watch TV, etc. Uh, if you run in the generator, everything in here is going to work. So you could fire up the fireplace, have the TV going, go ahead and flip on the air conditioners if it was hot inside rather than the fireplace, you know, whatever you want to do. So it is rigged up and ready to go, ready for life on the road. You can tow a very large tow vehicle with you if need be. Oh, here's our power management system I meant, mentioned earlier today too. It's set to 30 amp service, which we're on. So we'll leave that there. Um, but yeah, tons of space and you're able to get to the fridge, to the sink, to the microwave, to the oven, everything while the slide outs are in. And if we want to push these back out, simply go to our BM Pro system and do that. Let's see, I'll just do it manually. There we go. You can see how much space the slide out gives you once it's fully out. It makes a big difference. It's still not uncomfortable though when it's in. I mean, if I was at a rest area, I wouldn't even push it out. So we're basically getting an additional, uh, what, 24 inches or so of space right here. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support and following the channel. We'll have a couple other models coming in soon. We have some new Red Hawks that just showed up that I'll do a couple of presentations on. I think we have a 24B Red Hawk, a 22A, a 26M Red Hawk, which is really cool. We'll do some videos on those. Tune in and we'll see you soon. Thanks again for following.